Okay, so uh, while, while Joe's getting on, uh, my name is Anthony mm -hmm. Deserva. I'm the Director of Product Management for the Security Services Offering at Phoenix Snap. So my role is kind of the uh, evangelist and the person that gets to create the requirements for what our products are and have our teams build it, right? Um, Steve, do you want to intro? Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate the time today. I'm Steve LeClaire, and I support PhoenixNet's partnership with VMware. Uh, we're a part of the VMware Cloud Provider Program, and I'm one of the strategic uh, business development execs and have had a relationship with PhoenixNet for over eight years. I'd be glad to go into some of those details at some point, but really appreciate their sponsorship and their support of this event today. Perfect. Um... Well, I'll jump in, and then when Joel joins, uh, he can definitely jump in. Uh, let's see. There we go. So, uh, obviously, a lot of you are, are familiar with Phoenix Map and, um, and what we do. However, Phoenix Map is a, we're a global, uh, global data center provider, a global infrastructure provider, and we've certainly grown over the last little bit. And as... A natural part of us, um, our infrastructure services, uh, we've definitely done a lot in the, in the space of adding security as a component of that service offering, right? So creating secure solutions. And we'll talk about that as we go through the presentation. Maybe um, while we're on that, on that thought, that, that last slide you just had, if we could go back, I could speak a little bit to the logo, uh, the VMware Partner Premier Service Provider. Um, as I'd mentioned, that uh, PhoenixNAP has been a strategic premier partner with the VMware Cloud Provider Program for over eight years, and we truly consider them one of our most valuable technical development partners. Uh, PhoenixNAP has helped us quite a bit with solution development. Um, they help us validate our solution design and capabilities, and also the operational readiness uh, with their cloud and security practices. We've had many instances where VMware has uh, established new technology solutions and has looked towards PhoenixNAP to help us validate those solutions. Um, that clearly helps them as they look towards you know, being a leader in the cloud and security area. They also use our advanced software to find networking as well. So again, just uh, speaking to their strategic position within VMware, it is a, uh, an enviable and desire, desired position by many partners, but PhoenixNAP has been with us for a long time and we appreciate uh, their support and we have very high confidence in PhoenixNAP. Uh, and we share that with, throughout VMware. So this gives you a little bit of a background on their relationship with us. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, guys, it, it, we're, it, this, I want to keep this in a very interactive format. We're going to cover some stuff that's, uh, that gets into technical detail and stuff like that. So I want to make sure that you guys get um, your questions answered. So feel free to jump in and then we'll break, when the questions come up, we'll, uh, we'll try to address them. Hey, and good morning, Anthony. This is Joel. Hopefully you can hear me this time. Yes, we can. Okay, great. I'm I'm so sorry about that. I was jumping on and having some technical issues, but uh, we figured it out. So um, let me speak to this slide real quick. I just want to uh, make sure everyone's aware of the fact that we are growing, um, but not every one of those locations across the globe is um, you know, going to offer the full stack of services. So um, the locations where you're seeing network pop, for example, um, those are organic growth locations for us with some customers that needed to be in those locations. We have fully implemented our network, um, our DDoS protected BGP blend, um, you know, peering and connectivity with uh, the data centers that we're in. Most of those global data centers are Equinix facilities, um, and that's been our go-to partner um, in most of those other regions. But um, the ones that I would like to highlight are Singapore, for example, um, Amsterdam, Ashburn, Atlanta, and Phoenix, Arizona. Um, those locations offer everything from our co-location um, plus the cloud solutions and security solutions and things along those lines. Um, so I just want to be sure that we uh, uh, don't miscommunicate, you know, with all of those locations across the globe that, you know, we're going to be, for example, a provider of whole scale or uh, hyperscale data centers uh, solutions in, in all of those locations. We can absolutely handle 
um, you know, small cages and, and private um, single cabinet type deployments um, and infrastructure as a service stacks as needed, um, but it's it's not a fully built out cloud, uh, cloud nodes for us. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I don't see any questions. Cool. Thanks, Joe. So, from a security solutions from a solutions perspective, we've got, we've got these major areas, right? The co-location we talked about, the security as a, the security services, the cloud services, um, our HAS and our backup services. The the two things we're going to focus on, um, like I really want to focus on the presentation, is the cloud services and the security services and how they really layer on top of each other to create a, a really strong, what I call a 360 degree uh, secure solution. So um, why us, right? Um, obviously we're extremely responsive. Um, we've, got a lot, we've got a lot of strategic marketing going on and, and strategic relationships going on as Steve talked about. And um, we've definitely had a 33% growth year over year. And Joel, anything you want to touch on this slide before I move on? No, that's good. I think at a high level. Okay, cool. And if I could just add to the the comment of top commissions and deals closing, we do have a relationship with the VMware sales field that does get compensated for uh, business that we do with Phoenix Now. That is a unique uh, program. And again, because of their status with VMware, they do participate with that. So you can feel rest assured that uh, if you do have a current relationship with a VMware team, we'll certainly integrate and support that activity and uh, uh, they will find compensations as well. Awesome. So from, from my solution side, we're obviously gonna talk about cloud, especially focused on this data security cloud. What data the when data security cloud was put together it was designed to basically create an optimized environment, um, but also a secure environment for your cloud workloads, right? It's um, the the goal was to create to be able to do what you could in colo like in a regulatory space, especially PCI, to be able to take advantage of cloud services and the cost basis of cloud services, and still be able to meet the regu regulatory requirements. And obviously, with that comes the easy onboarding, and um, and obviously being a VMware uh, cloud certified provider, a cloud verified provider, um, that gives you the micro segmentation, the tools that we talked about at the beginning. And as we go through, we'll talk a little bit about how we use those tools to make this that secure environment for these workloads. Um, now, all of that, obviously, the security services stacks on top of that to create. The, the ongoing threat management of that environment. So things like manage, detect, and triage, uh, problems that come up, alerts that come up, uh, being able to do threat management, being able to do vulnerability assessment, being able to do asset management on the environment, and then to use threat intelligence as a proactive tool to, uh, to prevent anything that's happening out there from impacting the, the workload that's inside, right, and impacted those businesses. So we look at everything as these layers, and why we do that is, like at the communication infrastructure layer, you focus on that. You do really, really well on that, and then the next layer that rides on top of that can rely on that level of reliability and then build on top of that level of reliability and quality, right? So we, we know we do a great job on our communication infrastructure. We own our own backbone. Those things um, help a lot, not only from performance and stability, but also from a security perspective, because we own and control it. Um, on top of that, the secure infrastructure, this is where Data Security Cloud, which was purpose built to be secure. The, from the ground up, switches up, it was designed to fit that model. The operating systems uh, using CIS hardened images, using good patch management technology, using good change control methodology, all of these play into maintaining that security and at the highest level, watching the network, making sure that those controls weren't circumvented or that something wasn't missed. And if it was, catch it and be able to action it. 
So keeping in that same um, methodology of kind of the, the stack layers, the if you look on the left-hand side, basically what that is is data is on the middle, and you put all of these layers around it to create the um, the protection mediums in these various layers and layers and layers and layers of, of protection so that you make it really, really, really hard for somebody to get at what they're looking for. Um, on the data security cloud side, again, we talked about writing on a proven base, right? You start by, you start there, you create a redundant communication fabric, you create the highly scalable VMware platform, you use the latest and greatest in hypervisor technology like the NSX, the zero trust, the micro segmentation, the, uh, the encryption technologies, all of these things to create an, a segmented environment that is protected from like what we call not south traffic, right? The outside coming in. But then you put sensors inside the system to monitor both the east-west traffic and that not south traffic so that you've now got a 360 degree view of everything that's going on so you can you can um, be assured and monitor and react to anything that comes up. Now, all that's been said, this is it takes an ecosystem, right? It takes a lot of partners to make that happen, and these are some of the partners we've worked with in this solution. Any questions before I go into a little more chewy stuff in the technology side? Cool. So. Steve, I think you <laughs> on this slide. Can I hand this one off to you? I think that's is um, just taking a look at this for the first time. My apologies, uh, but um, Anthony, I think you're probably the best to run okay, this. Okay, Yeah. So what what we did was we looked at. So we worked very closely with VMware. We worked very closely with Intel in a partnership to create this solution. Right. So what I did was I mapped out the pieces of technology um, that kind of came out of this partnership that, um, that we integrated in to create the data security cloud. So the root of trust modules, the, the being able to validate that you're running secure workloads and secure infrastructure, uh, being able to um, use the, the efficiencies built into the microprocessor I think the, the, the Intel Gold uh, chipset, the direct integration of all of that into VMware and how VMware takes advantage of all of those features at the, the, uh, the hardware level and then tying the uh, secure encryption keys, trusted connectivity. We use in our environment, we use Tychotic so that the administrators um, uh, basically don't have direct access to passwords they get the token, uh, so things like that. All of these components of good security practice was built into this environment, and that's the environment you're running inside of. That makes sense? So, move, now, all of that's great. We created a secure environment. Now, that wasn't enough, right? We talked about now we want to monitor everything that goes on in an ongoing basis. So what I put, put together here was just kind of a sample of how we'd use this inside of the environment. So the blue box is your, your VROPs, your, your instance, right? Inside of that, what I created was three network segments and created um, uh, rules inside of each of those networks, network segments as to what, what can talk to what and what can do what inside of that. So now we've got three distinct security security protected networks inside of an, an instance of VMware, a custom instance of VMware, with the ability to do full control um, right down to which machine, which machine, which port talks to which machine, which port, right? Um, on the outside, um, we can certainly work with various different uh, WAF and CDN solutions. There are a bunch of hosted solutions that we've uh, used in the past. And all of that is logged into Log Insight. Log Insight is, a, is a, uh, a login tool that comes with VMware. And then that information goes into our SIM technology, which in this case is Logarithm. That SIM technology, and I'll talk more as we get to another slide, basically looks for correlations within behavior of network traffic to identify threat. 
So that's the whole goal, right? It's you're going to look at everything in real time and you're going to try to identify threat based on patterns and behaviors that we already know about. And if you see it, we're going to take action on it based basically knowing that something's going on that is not necessarily a good thing. So I will continue. Um, and guys, yeah, this is what I'm going to say. Just stop me if I get too into the weeds here. So global cyber threat, is it real? Oh, yeah, I think it's pretty real. But this not, this thing was interesting. 77% of organizations do not have a formal security incident response plan. It's one of those things that, it, that you've all heard the statement. It's not if it will happen, it's when. So if you know something's going to happen, um, it, like me, I want to be prepared for it, right? So things like the bench testing, things like having pre pre mapped out plans, pre mapped out uh, response cycles, all of these things, I think create you in a better posture to actually respond to it when it happens, versus trying to figure it out. So that's a scary thing that 77% of the organizations are in that mode of oh it won't happen to me. Um, the other part of this is that that six trillion number. Well, the 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 breach that happened with the Apple uh, the Apple T, I think TMC that was projected at about eight trillion dollars over five year period of time, right? Um, the number we're seeing a lot is a single breach can cost a company about four million three and a half to four million dollars. That's consistent across all of the different providers that have produced this data. So that's a pretty big number, especially for a small to medium sized business. So there are some things that you, that make security a kind of prominent thing that we do need to pay attention to. And the stat that wasn't up this 58% of all of the breaches happen to small to medium business. So from a big picture perspective, what, are, what do we have at Phoenix Nap to bring to the table as a solution for this, right? Um, so a threat management basically helps the, helps the visibility, helps the reaction, the reaction to a problem, and it gives you some ability to be proactive uh, in defense. So we take things like the firewall logs, we take things like the uh, vulnerability scans, especially based on the requirements the client has as an, as an organization, like are they bound by regulatory requirements? Do they have to do things a certain way? And we take logs. We take logs from servers. We take logs from the edges and the endpoints, and we bring that into the threat management system. And what that, um, inside of that, actually I'm gonna skip move that what uh, we we add the backup and recovery and the global infrastructure as components so there's a term right it's you can't you can't protect yourself 100 percent of the time but no one's 100 percent secure so again assuming that something will happen you have backup and recovery as a strategy ready to go that if that something happens you're ready for it um so this slide kind of goes to the world of what threat management lo looks like. Threat management and threat intelligence go hand in hand. If you remember the old antivirus days, the, the better your virus signatures, the more you updated your virus signatures, the better you were protected. Well, that logic's the same. If the, the more updated threat intelligence data you have, the faster and better you're gonna be protected. So, what when we built out our threat management solution, we also built out a threat intelligence program in partnership with a local company called Actra that has relationships with each of the member companies to provide threat data in real time. Now, what that means in real time is somebody gets hit, we get that information, they immediately send that information to every to everybody in that membership pool, and then we can take that in action that create a mitigated strategy. What that data we get and the solution we get is typically handled within a 24 hour period. So we've been able to implement those solutions for our customers faster than, um, than waiting for like the threat intelligence data that comes off, like things like OTX and the, 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 uh, the free ones, right? So anyways, all of that to say that we 
we use an ingestion methodology, we use an enrichment pr uh, protocol, we validate our threats, we escalate it, we create the mitigation strategy and then implement it in our system. And I'll talk about the threat management in a second. The goal here is to get as much intelligence, as much useful information quickly to protect our customers. So we talked a lot about threat management. We talked about a lot about SIMS. Um, it, what is it really, right? What it really is, is we get some threat data. We get some customer logs. So we get the activity logs. We take the two. We match it up and look for behavior patterns. If a known bad behavior pattern shows up, we throw up an alert, and then we action that. Now, the other side of this is you can have alerts that you know that a certain somebody comes in every Monday morning and types the password three times before they have get in the system. Well, you don't want to keep alerting on that, right? You, you don't want to have that come up. That's so you're gonna you can tune that out and only respond to the things that matter. So there's a whole process around um, that that we that we actually do as well to take out the noise out of your system. So you're getting better responses, better um, actionable intelligence from us on things that are, that really matter. Um, okay, this is kind of how the implementation actually works. And um, this is gonna be the, the technical slide. So definitely uh, stop me if there's any questions. Um, one of the thing, core things that we wanted to design again is not to have VPN access into the customer, in, customer environment to protect both the customer and us. So we have a collector that will drop in the customer environment. We'll collect all these logs that we talked about. Those logs will get encrypted and compressed and sent over the internet to us via a secure channel. That information then ties in. We use um, we we went through an extensive search and picked Sophos as our preferred vendor for endpoint solutions. And again, because of the cloud integration and the holistic um, coverage, and we tie all of that into our system. Once Logarithm actually picks off that there's something that needs action, we use Swimlane as an orchestration tool, which then automates the gathering of information to provide to the incident responder, at which point we will triage it and then work with you to, uh, to, know, to get you the information you need to get this, uh, the situation resolved. Okay. Any questions on that? There's no way I can explain that at all. Uh, anyways, um, so a couple of key things, right? We want to build this with a standard-based um, uh, methodology, and we based it on the NIST framework. Um, one of the key things that I always differentiate about us with the NIST framework is this recover component. Standard um, implementations out there will will kind of either end at the detector, end at the the respond component, where you get an email from the system that says, "Hey, by the way, you, we found a problem. This is the problem. Now you have to do something about it." Um, most of the client base can't have; they won't know what to do with that, right? So we've got, brought in solutions that. Um, basically try to give them as much of this information as they can to be able to action that versus just ignore it and keep the problem going. Sorry. Um, so incident handling, again, same, more of the same, like kind of go into detail about how we take the threat intelligence and, um, and um, manipulate the threat intelligence to actually create that valid information. The last thing I wanted to say on that is there were 53,000 um, threats that came across the wire last year. No SOC can handle that much load, right? You can't process all of that. So what you have to do is you have to be able to pick the ones that matter and only work the ones that are really critical. So this is a process that we use to actually identify those critical threats and work those first. Last statement on this. this. So there's 7,100 open jobs in Maricopa alone in cyber. So even if you are an organization that wants to stand up your uh, cybersecurity organization, 
the challenge is you're not going to be able to find the resources you need to uh, to make that work. And the retention is also a pretty significant issue, right? So all of that to say, skill shortage is real. Um, it is a challenge for organizations to maintain the security posture. Security is a 24 seven uh, operation. So you need multiple people to, uh, to maintain security. Um, and it is a holistic solution. It requires an entire ecosystem. It's not just a bunch of point solutions that you stick together to, to make work. So Phoenix NAP offers the our, uh, our infrastructure customers this, this enhanced protection solution with our, with our ability, because of all our solution sets, we're able to kind of create that, that holistic solution that we bring to the table that only a data center and infrastructure provider can bring to, the, bring to our customers and finally, it brings a peace of mind. That being said, that's all I had for the. Well, let me add, if I could, uh, Steve LeClaire again here from VMware, uh, speaking to PhoenixNAP uh, Data Security Cloud. We view this as an enterprise class cloud solution um, for cloud security. It, you know, the threat management offering leverages VMware network applications and user and device security solutions. And so uh, rest assured that what uh, what Anthony has presented today is the building blocks and the back end infrastructure that is widely uh, approved and supported by VMware and will, I believe, meet the needs of, of your uh, partners and your customers. Yeah, absolutely. And Anthony, you know, one other quick question I had without sharing any names or naming anybody, you know, do you have any examples of, you know, threats or, or, or you know, an attack that, that we've been able to stop in the, in, in the recent past? You know, just an example of what happened, um, you know, what we did to mitigate that risk. Yeah, I think the one we're proud of is 23 minutes end to end. Um, it, think it took us like 90 seconds to detect it. What happened was uh, we had um, a, a person from a, from a group within the organization open up some ports on a server and not adequate, like the any anything, but it wasn't an any anything. Yeah, um, typically, typically administrators have this bad habit of doing any any first to troubleshoot a problem, opening up every machine completely to the internet. Similar scenario, they did something like that. Um, a hacker broke in within a few seconds of them doing that, got on the machine, changed the administrator password, um, and started to basically spread from that machine into other machines. We saw the behavior, um, and it obviously looked odd. We saw a couple of brute force attacks, and we started to track them. And the minute we tracked them, we realized what was going on. We, it was, don't think it was Romania, one of those countries that it was the eastern countries that um, the attacker was from, which was also kind of something that triggered us. Um, so we shut the, we shut the attacker down. We started to do um, analysis on how far they got, and all of that within a 23 minute time frame. So, and if you guys know what kind of the average security thing, um, an average hacker has been in a company system about 100 days before they get found. Like that to me is a bad stat, right? That that's just really bothers me. And we so we are very proud of that, the fact that we were able to catch them and take them out before, long before the 100 days. Now that's good to know. And, you know, and effectively, you know, watching it 24 seven and being able to see, you know, behaviors and notice that hey this isn't correct and and stopping that before it can get worse is um, again the ounce of prevention better than a pound of the cure right um, we you know, conversely we've had disaster recovery as a service customers come to us after malware has spread throughout their entire system having to run on their disaster recovery solution um, and so they can go back and clean everything up on their production environment and their desktops and everything and, and it doesn't just take days it takes weeks um, to get the the fix in place so um, you know 
these are the types of security solutions that you know not only the small and medium businesses but larger enterprise can take advantage of when they leverage Phoenix NAP infrastructure. Specifically, if they're leveraging Data Security Cloud, um, Data Security Cloud is designed to give us the foundation for security first, um, so that way we can. Um, have a much more holistic approach. So Anthony, thank you so much. And Steve, thank you so much for um, helping host this. And again, I apologize for being late, jumping on some issues there. But um, right here on this slide, you'll see the contact information for the channel management team and myself, the director of channel sales. Um, we are going to make this uh, webinar uh, it is recorded, so we're going to make this available to everyone. And uh, feel free to follow up with us if you have any additional questions for Anthony or Steve or myself. Um, if you have any opportunities to work with any clients, um, you want to get those registered, we can talk about that, get you access to the portal. And if anyone out there is not currently a partner with Phoenix Snap, um, you know, I would encourage you to check out our partner page, um, contact me. Uh, so that way we can have that conversation and talk about how you can help your customers enhance their security solutions, um, you know, lead them into cloud services that really do matter for their business. So thank you all for your time, um, and we'll wrap up. Any any last minute questions, anybody? Before we just a thank you to uh, Phoenix Snap for hosting and to the attendees for your time and patience. Again, glad to work with you going forward. Looking forward to opportunities. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye.